Are you living too fast? Rushing to work in the morning? Busy work schedules? Coping with work stress? How many times I need to tell you? Are you even listening? The meeting gonna start soon. Can you get this done faster? Move please. Rushing home from work in the evening? Traffic jam? Working overtime? Having trouble sleeping? Take care of your body. Take charge of your mental wellness. Welcome to Malaysia Kini's Facebook Live. My name is Nadia and I will be your host tonight. And tonight we will be discussing the topic Mental Watch Make It a Priority. So of course everyone is living a hectic and busy lifestyle with high levels of stress. You know, every now and then you see, actually this past few weeks you've been seeing on social media people complaining about starting to go back to work and how the traffic jam is horrendous. So every person experiences stress. And of course, when faced with threatening or dangerous situations, stress can be positive or negative. For example, you may be inspired to meet a deadline or you may lose sleep as a result. I know I have. But when stress becomes overwhelming and prolonged, the risks for mental health problems and medical problems increase. So long-term stress increases the risk of mental health problems such as anxiety and depression, substance abuse problems, sleep problems, and also bodily complaints like maybe muscle tension. You know, you think it's just a backache, but it could be something more. So this, to discuss on the importance of mental health tonight, we have three speakers with us. Firstly, let's welcome Dr. Cassandra, who is a clinical psychologist and owner and director of MindWell. And then we Hello. also... Hi, Dr. Cassandra. And then next, uh, KSB, who is the country head of Vital Life Sciences, Malaysia and Singapore, along with Westmin Khan, who is a pharmacist for Caring Pharmacy. Hello. 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 Hi, everyone. Okay, let's go straight into it. Now, the first question, um, how common is stress? Bae, you've got a little bit you want to talk about here? Yeah, um, we are aware that mental health is the next big thing. Traditionally, as you know, as a supplement brand, we always focus on our body and physical health. And often, we actually forget about the importance of mental health. So we have been planning for this series since more than three years ago. We have done a lot of uh, research, designing formulas, testing, collecting evidence and testimonial before we came up with a series of mental wellness products. I believe everyone is seeing news reporting about the rise of mental health issues globally. So our lifestyle changed drastically, especially during lockdown where you were kind of forced to stay at home. And we were seeing this as a serious mental issues in China currently as well. We can see people around us suffering from insomnia, anxiety, or even depression. As part of society, Mother Health is happy to hold the social responsibility to drive campaign about mental wellness to increase awareness to the public. So the objective of us having um, Dr. Cassandra and Westmin in this live show is to raise the awareness of mental health and why does it matter. With more awareness, you can understand your symptoms and to be more open to seek professional treatments. So we want to break the stigma or stereotype about mental health. Okay, That's why um, we are here today. All right. Uh, thing is, I'm a heavy social media user, and I hope that's not a sign of a, a mental health problem. But <laughs> <laughs> however, like the past um, few years, you see, like they said, there's more talk about it, and there's more awareness about it as compared to like in the past. But with that, it also comes like other issues whereby like a lot of people like to self-diagnose. So, Dr. Cassandra, how common is stress? It's like are there some sort of like red flag warnings that indicates maybe you have too much stress? 
Sure. Yeah. I like to look at stress as your body's way of telling you when you're taking on too much and you're not taking care of yourself in the way you need to. Um, like you said, Nadia, stress is unavoidable. Everyone experiences stress with good things, bad things, um, going to work every day, juggling tasks, and it's something that we have to learn to live with. However, we need to know when is too much going on and when do we have to take a step back? So some of these warning signs look like changes in sleep. This might be sleeping too much or insomnia, sleeping too little. Um, I'd say insomnia is one of the highest reported statistics for there being too much stress going on. Um, changes in mood. So you've probably seen your coworkers, family members, when they're stressed, they're irritable, angry, um, not their usual happy selves. They're on edge, honking their horns. Um, that, that's all a sign of stress. You're, you're wound up, overwhelmed. People's thoughts are racing, anxious, and they're kind of dreading things. I think another key warning flag that we need to pay attention to is how much someone feels like they can handle stress. Mm. If you have someone who's like, I am completely overwhelmed, but I feel like I'm sleeping okay, I'm handling it okay, they tend to do pretty well. If not, that's time to step in and see what we can do about it. Yeah, I strongly agree with what Dr. Cassandra shared just now regarding the signs and symptoms of, and all these red flags. And thank you, Beth, for highlighting all these issues and drive this campaign. So let me share what we, community pharmacists, experience in the society. All right, so this mental health issue actually has been moving towards the younger crowd nowadays, especially after the COVID-19 pandemic. Last time, we used to see working adults coming to the pharmacy looking for a solution on how to decrease the stress level and also how to improve the sleep quality but nowadays we can see the younger population for example the secondary school teenagers or even the older generation age 50 or 60 those after retirement come to pharmacy looking for the solution on how to decrease the stress level and how to improve the sleep quality. So how we actually determine this group of people is having stress. So firstly, it's through the conversation by asking more questions, communicate with the customer, listening to them, we can actually know this group of people is under stress. Besides that, it's through the observation. We actually observe the facial expression of our customer by uh, looking at their eye contact, the tone of voice, or even their gesture and their posture when they are talking to us. Yeah. Wow, I'm I'm suddenly like aware of my gestures and my posture. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I better sit properly so that I look very healthy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because sometimes when the customer, you can actually feel it and see it through their um, eye contact. Because nowadays we are all with the mask on. So you basically just see mm. the eyes of the customer. Right. Yeah. You start focusing on that. Okay, so uh, Dr. Sandra, like when you are stressed, how does it translate emotionally? Sure. Uh, I, the first signs of feeling stressed are people feeling overwhelmed. Like, I can't imagine taking one more thing on. Um, mm -hmm. So people start to feel overwhelmed, to dread things, to start to avoid tasks that they have, or mm -hmm. simply to avoid, you know, other obligations. And that might be spending time with friends or going to the gym, things that actually buffer them from stress. Mm -hmm. uh, but it completely uh, impacts you both emotionally and physically. There's no real part of you that gets away from it. Um, speaking, like Wesman said, about observation, you might notice yourself or someone else becoming tearful, um, frequently looking sad, withdrawn, overwhelmed, irritable, and, and those are really the signs that this person is under too much to be coping with right now. Mm -hmm. 
And how about like um, nervousness or, you know, like feeling worried about stressful situations? How about that? Yeah, you know, it's funny talking about the pandemic, um, like Ben and Wesman have, I think a lot of people are having trouble shifting back to being in the office, being outside, and they're feeling a lot of that added stress, right? Like I'm nervous, I am um, I feel kind of on, uh, on edge a little bit, I'm sweating, I mm. feel tense, my jaw hurts all the time, um, and everyone else can see it is what they worry. You know, so a lot of people are more and more, I think, coming in talking about these things and, uh, and how outward it is. I feel like it's, uh, it's something that a lot of us actually took for granted. We didn't realize, like, you know, we keep being told that you need seven hours of sleep at night at least. Yeah. And then that when we went to the lockdown, everyone's like, oh, now I've got time to do everything I've always wanted to. And then suddenly we had no bread. And then we were all stressed about no bread. And then we were stressed about, like, um, suddenly we had too much time to sleep. So can you yeah. tell us more about, like, the sleep patterns? Like, sometimes you say if you sleep too much, you are also it's also an issue, or you sleep too little. What's the, like, the balancing factor? Yeah, good point. So sleep is so much to do with structure and routine. Um, it's very much triggered and indicated to us by the sunlight, by leaving our house, our bedroom. Mm. And now with so much work being remote and being in lockdowns, um, people are having a lot of sleep problems. And that has to do with they're taking naps at different times, they're sleeping later, they're getting up later. And it's, it's causing a kind of domino effect. Um, that coupled with stress in general, uh, stress makes you kind of lie awake and think and think and think and think. Mm. So a lot of people find it hard to shut off their thoughts, to control them, and instead lie awake for hours, ruminating or waking up often. Mm. Um, I will say some people will also oversleep to avoid thinking about stress. So there is that other side of it too. Uh, Westman, how about like how people actually feel physically when they're stressed? What would be like the symptoms? Is, is it like you suddenly feel tense in the body or you feel like super exhausted? Yeah, yeah. It's like what Nadia said just now and also Dr. Cassandra said just now. Actually, under stress, right, we not only change emotionally, but also behavior changes. For example, the change of the sleep. You either sleep too much or you sleep too little. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so people actually handle stress differently because the symptoms can be vary from person to person. So we might actually experience stress Physically, for example, high blood pressure and the pulse rate will increase. The breathing will actually speed up as well. But very common and most common all of us um, experience when we are under stress, right, is headache. The tense of uh, the muscle, body ache, stiff neck and shoulder. Okay, let me share a real case that happened in the pharmacy, I think just last week. So... Last week, right, a mom and a son actually came in asking for a strip of muscle relaxant. So uh, as usual, I'll ask a lot of questions like, uh, who is taking this medication? Why do you need this medication? And after asking all these questions, right, then only I found out this strip of muscle relaxant is actually for the son, the 13 years old son. It's not for oh. the mom. Yeah, mm. that's because of this son is experiencing the stiff neck and the shoulder. Then, yeah, I was like, continue to ask question again. Like, what is the reason uh, you need this strip of muscle relaxant? Is it because of uh, your over-exercise? Because it's quite common, right? Maybe the teenagers, they over-exercise in the school. Then, uh, how long you have been experiencing all this stiff neck or stiff shoulder? You will be quite surprised because all the while when I'm asking this question, right? The son just keep quiet. He doesn't answer any question. All the while, it's the mom answering my question, questions. And the mom told me, oh, I think it's because of stress. 
Then I was like, oh, okay. Uh, and the mom said, uh, after school, he actually need to attend a lot of learning classes, for example, swimming, piano, guitar, all these things. And oh. through the conversation, the boy actually has no eye contact with me or with the mom at all. And he was just like looking here and there, moving here and there. So we can say um, stress actually affects us physically and also through the gesture and the posture and how you connect with the people, right? It can actually show you how stressed you are. Yeah. Right. So it probably a lot of time when we have body ache and all these things, we mm. feel like, oh, maybe I'm just too tired. It probably is a sign of us. Uh, you are right. overstressed, but you just doesn't doesn't take it as a matter. True, mm. true. Yeah. To add on to that, I, yes. I work with people. Yeah, to add on to what Ben was made, uh, saying, um, huh? uh, when people suffer from stress for too long, what we end up seeing yeah. a lot of too is burnout, right? And the pe people realize they're burnt out because physically they come in and they're having gastrointestinal problems, ulcers, mm -hmm. um, they're getting sick more and more often with immune system issues, and mm -hmm. they have to take days and days off work right? Because all of a sudden their physical health is slowing them down to say, you cannot continue this process or, or that you're on. True. Yeah. Well, um, Dr. Cassandra, this question is for you. Why is the awareness of mental health important? Yeah, good question. I am I'm a big proponent for educating on mental health awareness. I think it's something that people are becoming more and more interested in since everyone has realized that the pandemic has taken a toll mentally. Mm. Um, we, we are surrounded by people all day. We have people we love, we care about, and we don't really know as a society, you know, what's going on with them. How is their mental health? But this is really a societal mm. problem. Right. So having awareness of what are mental health issues people can typically face? How do I talk to people about mental health? And that's everything from anxiety to sleep to suicidal thoughts. Um, and how do I recognize when I am having a problem with mental health? Um, we need to know that because we kind of understand when we should go to a GP, but not really when we need to go get a mm -hmm. checkup for mental health. Yeah, I think um, it's still somewhat taboo in certain like cultures, and perhaps more so in the Asian culture, right? There are it's like things that we're not supposed to talk about, or rather, we say we yeah. just call it like carrying our dirty laundry. But what we yeah. don't realize is that it could be actually something you know deeper. But um, yeah, we were talking earlier about how it can lead to other things. So what what kinds of health problems can stress lead to? Yeah, so health problems stress can lead to are on the simpler end, you know, it's the headaches, the tension headaches, the gastrointestinal discomfort, stomach pain, muscle cramps, generally feeling unwell, but it does lead all the way up to having more chronic conditions, chronic pain. Um, especially women tend to experience more chronic pain as a result of stress and mental health than men do, um, as do people under 35. Uh, so there, we need to kind of understand the unique presentations that people are having here. Okay, um, we have a question here from Facebook, and it's um, from C.L. Dure who says, is there a hotline for one to reach out for counseling or therapist support? If yes, please elaborate on the process. Sure. So there is in Malaysia, there is the Befrienders hotline um, that can be simply accessed by going onto their website or by going uh, dialing their number directly, which I'm happy to post for people. Um, they are a confidential hotline that deals with everything from suicidal thoughts to anxiety and depression. Um, you can call them at any time. 
apart from that, I would say that it's always good to try to come in to a, uh, a practice of mental health practitioners where you can kind of form a, uh, a relationship with your a therapist so that someone can kind of oversee and be there for you to build a trusting relationship to work through mental health issues. Um, would you like me to list the number if that would be helpful? Yeah, yeah, sure. Why not? Okay. Of so course. for anyone interested, you can go to Befrienders, which is B-E-F-R-I-E-N-D-E-R-S dot org dot M-Y. And their phone number is 03-76-27-2000. Two nine. Um, if you Sometimes. are, if a hotline is not the right avenue for you, definitely finding a clinic. Um, I am part of Mindville, which is one too, and people can usually guide you to the best kind of source of support, even if it's somewhere in the community. Right, thank you so thank much, you so Dr. Cassandra, for sharing this uh, information. We actually do not know that there is a hotline for us to call. So this is a, oh, actually yeah. very important, yeah, so that we yeah. can share with the community as well. Thank you so Absolutely. much for sharing. Yeah. Um, uh, Be, um, as yeah. all of you have actually mentioned again and again that mental health issues are on the rise, or maybe people are more open mm -hmm. to talk about talking about it now, right? So from the commercial point of view, do you see an increase of demand for mental health solutions? Yeah, uh, we before we, we came out with this series, we actually did a lot of um, research, like I said. So we have data and the facts supporting this, um, this decision where according to the survey by Euromonitor, so mental health products have the fastest growth among many health products. So can you believe that mental health category is growing from top 15 to become top five in a world ranking within these two years. Just within 24 months, it grew up so fast and mental health series is the top growth among all the category. So it shows that consumers are increasingly concerned about mental health when we spend more time with technology like, rather than meeting friends and family in person. Because just now, Dr. Cassandra was talking about the causes of stress. Uh, it could be financial relationship or your work or, or it probably just any weather changes. or it, it could be anything. And I would like to add on one more, which is the technology is another big culprit when it come, comes to mental wellness. Undeniably, we are all addicted to social media. Like Nadia also said, that you know, you are, you're spending so much time on social media. Some may tend to scroll through social media like TikTok or Twitter before bedtime. That, that's mm. myself as well. So sometimes even midnight, when you can't sleep, you scroll again. You look at TikTok again. Recently, you look at Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. <laughs> oh, yes. So the more you scroll, the more awake you will be. Yeah. So and and the blue light from your screen can also affect your sleeping quality. Right. So we know that it is bad for our health both physically and mentally because you you don't have enough sleep, you you have poor mental state, so you can't but you you just can't stop yourself from doing it like especially swiping through the social media. So technology keeps us advancing and we must continuously upgrade ourselves to keep up with the changes. So people will always say, hey, my colleague know this and my, I must also learn this or I want to be better or I, I want to just create some pressure and stick competition among co-workers or peers, right? So the worst part that we always, always see people posting or rather bragging about their accomplishment, vacation, nice food, you know, people like to post about, oh, um, my, my hubby buy me a, a, a big diamond. So, you or, or maybe they will just selfie with the new cars or branded belongings on their Facebook or, and Instagram. So, it, it will eventually create some competition and people may start to compare themselves with this so-called ideal life and end up they fall in, falling into jealousy, lower self-esteem or even feeling that they, they have depression when people have too much of access to each other's life through social media. And the worst part is people gossip just based on your Facebook profile. 
So that, this is creating a lot of stress in our daily life, actually. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Sorry, Nadia. Uh, I completely agree. Negative feelings just arise, and it's not supposed uh, to be a bad thing, but it has become a really bad thing over the years, right? All right. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it's um, people use social media so much, especially during the lockdown, but even without the lockdown, just more and more, right? And the purpose is initially to connect, to learn. And we know that one of the biggest protective factors for mental health is just social connection and belongingness. And I think it starts off like that, but you have all these vulnerable people, especially um, kids, teens, who are learning so much about things that they shouldn't learn and they're not emotionally ready to learn. Um, exactly. And they're losing out and like, building these connections that we all got to naturally do, I think. Okay, um, uh, let's just talk about something that I personally went through during the lockdowns. So uh, there was this app that came about. It was a, a brand new way of uh, connecting via social media. It was called Clubhouse. It's still there, but it's not as um, used as it was at the height of all the lockdowns. And the funny thing was like, sometimes late at night when I was on it, some random people will come into certain rooms and just start talking about all their stresses in life and all that. And everybody in the rooms would get together and form like a support system. And so like, you start to wonder, do these people not show or speak about their issues to the to the people that know them or the people who are closest to them, right? So, Dr. Cassandra, how, like, how can we tell if someone we know is actually struggling with mental health issues? Yeah, I, I think that's a great question, right? It's like when we ask people, how are you? And we know the socialized response is saying, fine, good, how are you, right? But um, I think people really need that question, like a genuine let's sit down together and just have a conversation of asking how are, how are things going at home, at work? Um, how are you really feeling? And I think this is so important for kids because most parents don't know that they're confiding in people online instead and they're mm -hmm. having other people confide in them sometimes with things that they can't re really handle yet. Right. So they're learning about um, suicide, for example, um, and being exposed to things. And as a family, you have no idea. So I think it's especially important to sit down with family members, with children and, and to say, like, uh, look, these are some of the ways you might be feeling. If you do, you, you can talk to me. There are many things we can do to help. Um, it's not something thing to be ashamed about. But I think it's just making a continuous conversation, not just one time, but a, a platform to keep talking. Is there, is there like a, a difference that you could see, like the most obvious change in, yeah. in behavior? For if someone is experiencing mental health issues? Mm. Um, I would say the withdrawal from other people is one of the largest issues. We're drawing from so friends. I, 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 okay, sorry. I have a question for Dr. Yeah. Cassandra. Like when when someone who is talkative suddenly become very quiet, does it mean wow. that he or she has mental health problem or some will define that a person becoming more mature? Because you see a lot of life quotes saying that, oh, yeah. we, we become more mature, that's why we become quiet so is, is that a, a, a consider a symptom of um, mental health issues yeah. or they are just purely become mature because when when yeah. we see people encounter this kind of symptom we actually should actually look for a psychologist or psychiatrist i think our audience would also like to know what's the difference between a psychologist and a psychiatrist as well yes yeah great question so one of the biggest symptoms is kind of a, is a sudden change in mood. If someone that you know is not their usual self, right? If, if it's someone who is 
very extroverted, very chatty, likes to stay busy. And all of a sudden they're staying in their room, not answering their phone. Um, that's a clear sign to be worried, right? And this can go the other way too. Someone who's more introverted, um, if they're all of a sudden trying to stay busy all the time, seeing people all the time, that's also a change in mental status that like we would call it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that, that's when you, when you should ask. I, I agree that people do tend to be more selective of their words, perhaps tend to keep to themselves a little bit more as they mature. But I think the key way to look at that is there would be a sense of, of calmness, of expressing growth versus more of a withdrawal into yourself, um, sometimes feeling the down mood that they're expressing too. Okay, um, going back to the best last question, yeah. I'm really interested to know as well the yeah. difference between <laughs> this and a psychiatrist because honestly, all of us always get it wrong and I'm sure it must yeah. be really annoying. To no, that's okay. <laughs> I'm sure most members of my family wouldn't know this question either. <laughs> so most people don't. It's okay. It's, it's very confusing. Um, so a psychiatrist has gone to medical school and has um, is able to prescribe medication. So when someone sees a psychiatrist, it's usually an evaluation that's about an hour long. And then follow-up appointments tend to be very short in nature, maybe 20 minutes. And they're focused on symptoms and side effects. Um, versus a psychologist, psychologists can have different degrees. Um, I have a doctorate in clinical psychology. Um, and just as an example, Malaysia, you must take certain types of clinical psych master's programs. And that, that along with some other rules makes you a psychologist. Um, psychologists tend to meet on a weekly basis, sometimes bi-weekly basis with patients to create behavioral and cognitive changes, work on coping skills. They tend to do the therapy and the work. Um, to put together, it's a great support system, right? Having both, and especially having communication between the psychiatrist and psychologist, um, you can really cover mo all bases there. All right. Okay, can, can so- we say that, Can we say that a psychiatrist is the one that give you the medication yep. or based on your condition and a psychologist is the one that guide you through the process. Is, is that mean so? Yeah, that's pretty accurate. It's the psychiatrist will give you medication, but not necessarily change the behaviors or the environmental issues causing it. So you kind of have to use both at the same time. I see. Right. On the other end of the spectrum, <laughs> how is it that <laughs> play a role in managing mental health? This one's obviously for Westmin. Okay, so uh, I think for community pharmacies, right, it's pretty straightforward compared to what Dr. Cassandra said regarding the psychiatrist and also the psychologist just now. So community pharmacies is always the first frontliners or the healthcare professional, um, the patient or the public more willing to approach to. So as a community pharmacist, uh, we suggest or uh, you should actually be more patient and more genuine, more sympathy to the customers. Spend more time to talk to your patient because this will actually create a trust between the community pharmacists and the customers. So by doing so, once the customer or the patient feel our sincerity that we are really willing to help them, then they are more comfortable to share more with us. So by listening to their problems, this is how community pharmacies can help to find out the root cause of, for example, um, the gastric upset or the stiff muscle is actually due to stress. So by identifying their problems and address this problem accordingly, then we can help the community or the patient to solve the problem. So it's quite common for community pharmacies just to provide a simple counseling on stress management and also suggest them to try out maybe some natural products. And 
definitely help them or ask them to seek for the professional help from the doctor or the psychiatrist if they need it. Yeah. So yeah, this is I, quite, I, yeah. I, I do see a lot of pharmacies in especially caring pharmacies, they giving a lot of patience and time to actually mm -hmm. listen to their customers who walk in. They probably just need somebody to, to chat and then yeah. to listen to, to their problems and all this. I think the frontliners is good. they also need a very, very strong mental health to True. actually listen and support their, their customers as well. Yeah, actually, right. we community pharmacists, we spend a lot of time right. talking to the customer, listening to their problems. Yeah. Mm. I think, um, of course, if you are not um, clinically trained, you can just simply absorb the negative energy of people who yeah, come exactly. over and try to speak yeah. to you. <laughs> exactly. Mm. Especially mm -hmm. since it's like day in, day out. So, Bae, uh, Vital Health has launched Charge Up, the first mental wellness series in Malaysia. Tell us about what inspired you to develop this. Um, mental health issues are widespread even before the pandemic but often often overlooked and i I'm, I'm pretty sure dr cassandra is getting more and more busy nowadays comparing to uh, many many years ago because this is something arising and we really you can feel it all around your friends and family or even colleagues so traditionally we believe that um you do hear like uh, someone is possessed, or in Malay, we say, oh, someone kena jampi already, before we have more knowledge about depression. So we, we observe the growing need and acceptance to a mental wellness issue. Mm -hmm. People become more open to discuss about this because when they know that hey, this is not kena jampi or, or bomo or, or possessed, uh, they will tend to like, okay, I, I really got to seek for medical help, I really got to seek for a psychologist to, to help me, to guide me through this journey. That's where we started to develop a series of mental health products called Chasha to specifically cater to some of the most common mental health issues like sleeping difficulty, body tension, anxiety, brain fog, and, and so on and so forth. Because every, every mental health issue actually started from a very, very minor kind of um, symptom before it, it goes into a, a very serious state. So each of us here plays a role to raise awareness and address mental health issues in our society. We, we got to work hand in hand and complement each other to cater mental health needs in our community. Right. All right. So um, Westmin, how about you tell us about the four new products in the Charge Up series that are being introduced to help mental well, uh, mental. Uh, mental wellness. Sure. So as we say just now, pharmacy is always the first place the community or the public to visit before they seeing a doctor. Mm -hmm. So sometimes they will come in to seek for some natural products to try first before taking the medication. So mm -hmm. if you are actually experiencing a very tense shoulder, very stiff muscle, you could try magnesium. Magnesium is a mineral. It helps us to relax. So, relax our muscle and reduce the muscle stiffness. So, this eventually helps us to sleep better at night also. So, that's why whenever we suggest a customer to take magnesium, right, you will suggest him or her to take it after dinner. Okay? So, besides that, we have licorice root extract, which is a very high antioxidant. It will help us to reduce the inflammation. So, if you are experiencing some stomach upset, or some discomfort stomach, heartburn, indigestion, this uh, gas that come from trash up will actually help you. Uh, so what about Bear? Have you ever tried any of the products here? Uh, okay. Yeah. I think we want to show a playback of our previous episode about sleep. Sure. All right. Myself, it's, mm. a deep, it is a deep sleeper. So oh. the moment I fall asleep, uh, within a few seconds or minutes, I'll mm -hmm. just fall asleep. So basically, I can't hear anything or feel anything around me anymore. Okay, so previously, I, I talked about myself. It, one of our uh, Health on the Beat series, I told about 
I used to be a deep sleeper. So I can sleep well at night and I can focus quite well at work during the day. I can even work for long hours, like even 16 to 18 hours. Wow. It's a bit stretched uh, some, sometimes, but I still feel fine. So, but things changed after I was tested positive earlier this wow. year. And the post-COVID symptom actually struck me quite harder. It lingered around with me for some time, even after I fully recovered. I, I, I should say, like, actually, I couldn't really sleep well at night. And it affected my mood, like a bit of cranky and lack of patience on the next day. Because the moment when you can't sleep, you feel like, oh my God, what is happening to me? Because all this while I was... A really a deep sleeper right then um, because of all this i get a bit of tired and i have um brain fog with slower response when people talk to me so during meeting and all those things um my colleague they try to talk to me and then i'll probably will let, um i got to think for a few minutes maybe mm-hmm. i just couldn't understand so i i I feel like this is probably a good time for myself to really encounter and testify myself with our series of products, especially um, Go Sleep and Sharpen. So I actually discussed with my team, so what are the things that I should tackle first? So the first thing I tackle on my sleeping problem, I start taking Go Sleep and it eventually helped me to reduce a little bit of my anxiety, slow down, and before I sleep, I unwind a little bit more time comparing to previously. Then um, my sleeping quality has improved probably in within a week. Then I'm also taking Sharpen to keep myself to become more alert and focused. So these products really work on me in roughly around a week. And now I can become a testimonial to share about the efficacy of this mental health series. So bad, you yeah. should actually the you should be the ambassador, ambassador <laughs> of this series. <laughs> actually, like what you mentioned just now, all those right. post-COVID symptoms, right? It's very common. All right. Yeah, it's very, very common. I- I'm sure a lot of people do encounter the true, same problem true. like me because I-, I spoke to a few friends of mine. Mm-hmm. They they actually have almost the same symptom like me. So I would tell them, it's like, let, let's have a try. Rather than you continue to feel worry and anxiety, then it, it probably will become a, a bigger problem. That's right. So, um, Westmin, I think this question is for you. There is a, a question that came in from one of our audience, and uh, Dean is actually asking if there are any side effects from taking the Chart Up series. The charge, uh, uh, side yeah, effect. Side actually, yeah. all these right are uh, actually natural products. So, for example, the magnesium is a kind of minerals. So, as long as you are taking it at a correct dosing, as suggested, uh, in the indication, then there is no issue. No worries. Whenever you want to uh purchase a supplements, always always ask and seek for the professional advice from the pharmacist and also the doctors. Because it's very different from different people. So whenever mm-hmm. we want to suggest or advise a customer to take a supplement, we will usually ask questions first. So we will actually suggest the most suitable product for a certain customer. Yeah. All right. So you wouldn't need a prescription, right? Yeah, for, for supplements, chart- we do not need that. All right. Okay. Um, so Dr. Cassandra, there is a question that came in just now that I think... Uh, should be asked as well. Somebody is asking, oh, Tifa Zati actually asked, um, does living a healthy lifestyle help in, you know, uh, curing or maybe helping with mental health issues? So is it actually a way or a textbook yeah. way to improve mental well-being? Yeah, um, I think a good way to look at your mental well-being is the same way you would look at your physical fitness, right? You would go for checkups, you would um, pay attention to physical symptoms that are different or new, um, just like that. Your mental well-being, um, paying attention to how do I put healthy activities in my day, which include nutrition, exercise, 
getting at least 30 minutes of sunlight, actual sunlight outside? Um, how do I have structure and routine in my day so that I feel like I have purpose and feel accomplished? And how do I connect to other people? These are kind of the main components that make a healthy lifestyle. And people tend to feel really empowered, good about themselves when they are doing these things, while also it having a big effect on just the biochemistry of your body and your symptoms of mental health. All right, so here's one for both Westmin and Bay. Any advice to the audience if they encounter any mental health issues? Okay, uh, for me, I will say talk. Talk and share your feeling and concern because this will actually help you to reduce, reduce the feelings of isolation. Who knows the unexpected suggestion or solution by the others might be workable for you, right? So talk to someone that you trust. It can be your family, your friends, your colleagues, or even healthcare professional, for example, doctor, psychologist, or even pharmacist. So we, caring pharmacists, are definitely more than happy to help. Yeah, um, I, I totally agree with, with Dr. Cassandra and Westmin. Uh, to talk to people, to seek for the professional help and get um healthy lifestyle, of course, like a little bit of exercise and all those things, it, it, it could help eventually. So throughout our awareness campaign, we would like to share and remind public to look for help if you find yourself are feeling down or depressed. Talk to people that you can trust. And we always say, um, spend a bit more time to listen to your friends and family mm -hmm. rather than, than leave them alone. This, this is something that we can actually do for the people around us, to do to the people that we love. So take care of your mental health, like how you take care of your body and physical health. That, that is great advice because I think we a lot of people actually take that for granted, listening, right? Yeah, Sometimes we exactly. feel like, oh, I'm there, I'm spending time with them, but you're not actually listening to what they are saying. So it's small things nice. like that. Um, we're going to move on to some Facebook questions because we've got quite a few here. And we've got one that is um, from CL Dore, again, the same uh, earlier one, but with a different question. So it says, please share some examples of questions and answers that will determine if a person is stressed. And it says down there, caring pharmacy. So I believe this question is for Westmin. <laughs> <laughs> how, how, to, how to pick up the sign and symptoms. How to pick up the yeah. sign and symptoms. So uh, some of the cases that I can share is like, um, okay, for example, a customer come in, right? Oh, yeah. I, I'd like to share one quite interesting case. Mm -hmm. Last time, I think two months or three months ago, there is uh, one expert actually come in looking, asking me for a weight management service. So he actually want to lose weight. So he said he has putting a lot of weight after the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, after he start to work from home, uh, because he's expect so definitely stay alone here in Malaysia. So mm -hmm. he spent a lot of time in social media also. So I spent about 45 minutes trying to talk to this customer and then plan, plan uh, working on a diet plan. So successfully, he lost some weight in a month. So he become our regular customer. So he will used to come to see me almost like at least twice in a month. So by chatting or talking to him quite frequently, I actually found out he's suffering from severe stomach upset. He used to complain he has a uh, terrible acid reflux mm. or he has no appetite to eat. Yeah. And then all these symptoms only happen after the COVID-19 pandemic since uh, he stay alone, working from home, all these things. So mm. we, we, we won't say that COVID-19 actually caused um, mental health issue directly, but indirectly, it actually affects our daily lifestyle and also our thinking, our mindset as well. So how to determine actually this patient is having stress? Because whenever he talks to me, right, you will, you will see he is actually frowning like this, or sometimes he will actually cleanse his face. 
Okay, so uh, whenever he tried to explain or talk to me, he will keep repeating the same question or the same answer. Yeah, so this is kind of like sign and symptom. Another sign and symptom is like when you are talking to the customer, he's like afraid to look uh, into your eyes. You're just like looking here and there. And then sometimes they will just like, uh, they can't stand properly. You feel they are like very tense and then uh, keep Did turning you yeah, she bring all these things. Yes. I see. Okay. Mm. Well, I did have a little bit of stomach upset earlier today. I hope it wasn't stressed or I just <laughs> <laughs> tiny, tiny little things like that, right? Those things are very important. So true, the true. Next, yeah, the next question, this one I believe is for Dr. Cassandra. Uh, Nandini Williams wants to know if exercising, th there is a saying that says exercising will help control mental illness just by itself. And she's asking how true is this statement, Dr. Cassandra? Uh, I, exercise is a very big part of keeping yourself in a healthy mind state and maintaining your well-being. Um, however, usually it isn't sufficient alone to control a mental health condition. Um, if you're experiencing some anxiety or some depression, I think everyone should try to focus on some coping skills. And that would be exercising at least 30 minutes. You know, if you can do it outside, which is proven to help even better, um, mm -hmm. that will have a difference on your mood. But a lot of times when people have mental health issues, it can be really hard to do those things. They really lack energy, motivation, and sometimes that feels like yet another barrier. So I would say that's when, if it's not working for you, that's when you should come see a therapist, see a professional, and, and work on a plan to get you to where you need to, to feel well. Mm. You know, a lot of time we hear people saying like I I don't feel like doing anything. That that's the yeah. worst part when they tell you I don't feel like doing anything. I don't want to go mm -hmm. out and that, yeah, that's the worst part. Exactly. exactly. And that's so much part of the cure is reconnecting with people, things you like, and um, you know, exercising, doing things that make you feel good about yourself. So right. it's so hard when the cure is a symptom too, sometimes. Okay, we have another I question. Answer, I just asked a question. So regarding the exercise, right? So usually what type of exercise we may suggest to uh, people who yeah. are under stress mm -hmm. to do it? It's more like aerobic or anaerobic or, yeah. The type of exercise isn't so important. It's mm -hmm. more that research has found that moving your body for 20, 30 minutes at least really has an impact on your mood, kind of oh, biochemically, yeah. um, in terms of, of um, especially depression and anxiety. Mm -hmm. And then we separately know that being outside, actual real sunlight on you for 20, 30 mm -hmm. minutes is so yeah. helpful. So I often tell people, you know, if it's difficult to imagine doing something, can you try to go for a walk for 20, 30 minutes? You know, set yourself up to succeed and build up slowly. Don't try to go, you know, like run a mile or kilometer or anything like that at first. Just start off slow so you can feel good about yourself. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing, Dr. Yeah. Cassandra. Yeah. I think that's something also, so many things that we take for granted, but uh, sunlight is something we really take for granted because in certain like cold countries, they suffer from darkness for at least a few months a year because during the colder months, it would be very dark and there's no sun almost at all. Uh, and I only know this because I actually went through this myself uh, a while back. I was living abroad and the winter months was very long. It was very dark and it was... Um, I suffered from depression and it was pretty bad. So we live in Malaysia where sunlight is of an abundance. So do not waste it. Thanks for sharing that, Nadia. Because I think um, there actually is a condition. There are seasonal affective disorders, we call them. Yeah. Which is just a way of saying depression and anxiety and mood changes that happen in the winter. Um, I worked in Boston before Malaysia, and 
there were, I would be many, many, many people who that meant they were depressed for about half the year. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's something we don't realize, but we have a lot of sunlight in Malaysia, so take advantage of it. Yeah. <laughs> you don't and have it, to be baking outside, exactly. but you know, like you said, no. just a few minutes a day. Yeah. Exactly. But actually being outside versus near a window, big difference. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay, um, let's take some of the last questions. One is from Hairuddin Dean, who says, um, I think what he means is that, does it mean that someone uh, who has a routine might be mentally ill or has some mental health issues? Is that for me, Nadia? Yeah, you can go for yeah. it, Dr. Sam. Of course, yes. Sure. Um, so I think in talking about if someone who is mentally ill, whether they need a routine, um, the answer is yes. Routine and structure are very helpful. Someone who wakes up in the morning and wakes up at all different types of the day, kind of meanders around, doesn't get dressed, doesn't really have an aim of where they're going, feels the symptoms of depression, anxiety, and other mental health much more. Mm -hmm. you know that having some simple routine even in your day, and that might be as simple as, you know, I, I get up around nine o'clock and I make sure I go for a walk in before noon. Um, having that kind of level throughout the day will actually hold you in feeling much better about yourself and keep symptoms at bay. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. However, you do have to be flexible because then that can... Yeah, the true. feeling of looking forward and, and move on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't beat yourself up if you weren't able to do something. You had to break your routine. You can balance for that after... Right. Okay, we have one last question, and I believe this is for um, Westmin, but um, I don't know if you can recall, but earlier, uh, Westmin, you were talking about a boy, a 13-year-old boy who came in with his mom. And uh, so this question is from C.L. Dure, who says, what was the support that was provided to the boy who suffered um, psychotic pain? I don't think he suffered from psychotic pain, but yeah, you know what he means. Yeah, so um, uh, in, in the end, I mean, in the case, I, sh I still uh, dispense a strip of muscle relaxant to the boy, but I actually try to talk to the boy as well. So, and also the mom say, actually, yeah, we are now we know a lot of competition, and our parents usually want the children to be the best, to be, uh, uh, yeah, mm. true, but don't put too much stress on the kids. Because nowadays, the academic schedule is very, very full. They have a lot of physical classes and also online classes. So just try to let them to have some freedom to do what they want. For example, like what Dr. Cassandra mentioned just now, you can just increase some um, physical activities or actually just try to uh, spend more time to talk to the kids. Because nowadays, we have both working parents as well. So parents mm -hmm. usually spend more time on works or even on the gadgets. Yeah, the mm -hmm. phone or the um, laptop, all these things. So like what I mentioned just now, talk to the people you love and then increase more physical activities. All these actually indirectly help you to reduce your stress and also improve your mental health being as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, I believe what Westmin means is like, giving a little bit of flexibility and also mm -hmm. me time as much as an adult need it. I think students mm -hmm. do need it as well. True. Yeah, absolutely. They just need to be allowed to be children sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. Okay, we're going to go for one last question and this one is for Dr. Cassandra. Um, how can sleep disorders lead to other mental problems? Yeah. The questions. Sleep is so key. I think, you know, Be, Wesman, myself, we've, we've spoken about how sleep is kind of at the center of everything, right? Um, sleep really gives your day a night uh, structure, routine. Um, it recharges you. It Without sleep, every mental health symptom is exaggerated. Um, mm. You know, just to 
give you an example. I, I work with a lot of people who actually, the reason they come in is they're unable to sleep. And one of the main reasons is that they are thinking too much and ruminating and having too many intrusive thoughts related to anxiety or things they think they've done. And they'll lie awake for so long, hours and hours, and then wake up each night um, and then get up early, right? And it, it's kind of something that's unseen. So that same person has to go live their day, look after their children, go to work. And sleep is what kind of recharges your mental, emotional battery. And now you no longer have a charged battery. You're going in on like empty, right? So mm -hmm. going in on empty means that you don't have the resources to concentrate, to be patient, take in information, learn, have empathy. So you're really just like, you're being very destructive to yourself in that sense your relationships work and it feels so out of someone's control because they don't know what to do about it. Right. And you cannot control yourself to sleep. It's the hard part. It's definitely number one on the list of things that we take for granted. Yeah. <laughs> so many things we take for granted. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight, our audience, and especially thank you so much to Be, Westman, and Dr. Cassandra for sharing invaluable knowledge with us tonight. Definitely a fantastic way to spend the evening as compared to maybe being jealous of strangers on social media. I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna stop sure, doing yeah, that. right. That's for afterwards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just don't do it, okay? <laughs> well, to our audience, we will see you again on the next episode. And to our panelists, thank you so much. Have a good evening ahead. And good night and goodbye. Thank you. Thank you good so night. much. Good night. Good night.